Hello everyone. So uh, today what we will talk about is 5G link budget. Now why is it important? Because whenever we are looking for how many 5G sites we need for an area, we need to do 5G link budget analysis. If you want to know what will be my cell edge throughput, the minimum throughput that you will get and end user will get, I need 5G link budget for that as well. Now 5G link budget is a complicated topic. Link budget in general is complicated. So what I've tried here to do is that I have tried to simplify it and give you the most important parameters that we need for a link budget, budget analysis. Before we go further in it, I, I made I think I will make it simple by using a simple tool that I created for this uh, session. So let's say if I want to look at the 5G link budget, what are the inputs I need? I need to tell what is the power of the base station, the G node B. Let's say take an example of 100 watts. Then we need to put an antenna gain at the G node B side. Let's say I put 20 dBi. Let's talk about frequency. So usually 5G is using N78 band. So let's say 3500 megahertz so if we do that and we have all these other buttons here that I will explain later so if I do calculate it will tell me the estimated cell edge distance is 843 now um, what are the inputs that we need for this so the cell edge throughput so I want 25 Mbps so let's say I have put it as 10 Mbps so I say that I want the cell edge where the user can get a minimum of 10 Mbps with 100 megahertz of channel and I do calculate now the cell range is 1006 meters that is around 1.06 kilometers so um, this is how we can change this now if I go back to 25 let's say if I go back to 50 if I go to 50 I try this then the cell has the range has gone down so you can see it's now only 592 meters so the more throughput you want at cell edge the smaller the cell edge cell radius will be the cell range will be similarly uh, other things I can choose a propagation model right now this is urban so if I go to rural so I try this one you can see that the cell range has increased again because for rural model we will have lesser losses so if you go back to urban we see this similarly we are using an RRU so if I want to use a massive MIMO unit which will have beam forming and more antennas per head more transmit elements so if I use this one I can see that it has increased to 795 so for the same distance I can for the same uh, configuration if I use a massive MIMO unit I can have a much bigger cell range so um, let's go back to our default values and check what we okay so if we use this one we have 100 watts power on the G node B with 20 dBi antenna and this is our frequency 3.5 gigahertz and we want 25 Mbps as my cell edge now if I want to to use this and I want to cover 50 kilometers uh, 50 square kilometers of an area let's say I have a town or a small city which is 50 square kilometers and I want to know how many 5G sites I need such that the users over there at least minimum throughput they get is 25 Mbps so I will use this I you put calculate so it will tell me the cell edge is 843 meters and you will need 36 sites to cover 50 square kilometers now if I change RRUs to massive MIMO units and I try again now what happened the cell range has increased and number of sites now I need to cover this area is around 20 now so with RRU I needed 36 sites but with massive MIMO units to support 25 Mbps throughput minimum I can I can only use 20 sites and cover the same area so this is how the link budget can give us different aspects and different things that we uh, that we want to know about site count about throughputs and uh, and all these inputs of losses and everything we will get back to it at the end again so, but let's now go to the theory to understand what these parameters are and why we need them so then we'll again in the end we will go back to this tool and do different um, iterations to see the impact of each on our output okay so let's have a look at it from the theoretical perspective now um, what is link budget now link budget is basically the, uh, the end result is we want to find the distance from the G node B to the cell edge where the user can sustain a minimum service now for that to understand we need to understand something some basics now the G node B sends some sends a signal at a high power 
this power is something that is total power at the base station right and it is the combination of base station power plus the antenna gain so this will be the total power that the G node B sends at now once it has transmitted that these electromagnetic waves when they go through the air they lose power also they'll go through different uh, blocking mechanisms like trees other buildings uh, other vehicles right even people so when you go through all of that you lose power and you receive something at the UE at a, at a low power right so this thing that you lose over here the losses you can say it's a total path loss so if I look at this from the equation perspective I can say the RX power the RX power that the UE receives here is equal to the total TX power minus the losses that it have that it that it uh, went through over there right so we can say total TX power minus the total path loss in other words the total path loss if we want to calculate the path loss then that is equal to the total TX power minus the RX power so I change path loss here and put RX power here so this equation is the most important equation that we need to understand now let's take an example to clarify it let's say my total TX power is let's say 30 dBm and on this side the the UE RSRP is minus 100 so what it means is that the path loss will be 30 minus negative 100 is equal to 30 plus 100 is equal to 130 so that means the uh, the you know, the you know we sent something at 30 dBm it went through a 130 dB of path loss and the UE received it at minus 100 dBm RSRP so that is how we can calculate this path loss from this equation now if this is clear now let's go a bit deeper and understand uh, further dynamics of link budget estimation now as we said this is the equation remember that total path loss is equal to total TX power minus RX power and total path loss by itself is actually a sum of different losses the propagation loss which is the loss of uh, the power when the electromagnet electromagnetic waves go through or travel through the air uh, the losses other body loss if they if the people is carrying um, a mobile they will have some body loss building loss if the UE is inside a building then these walls these penetrations of these walls will create some loss as well that is the building loss right then we have vegetation loss right so vegetation loss means that if there are trees in between then the UE and the um, electromagnetic waves or the transmission state signals will have to go through trees that will also cause a loss then we have other buildings and other obstructions that can cause shadowing um, and reflections this will give us fading margins so this will give us shadow fading slow fading and then we have other G node B's which are also transmitting and that will give us interference to this uh, UE's SINR so that is interference margin so the total path loss is basically a sum of all these losses now when we're talking about cell edge then what we need to know is the minimum signal strength where the UE can sustain a service that is the UE's or the, the or the UE vendors receiver sensitivity now this is something that we know for a UE so what we do is that the equation becomes total path loss is equal to total TX power minus the minimum received power that can be uh, that the UE can um, where the UE can sustain a service so when we do this then this path loss is the maximum path loss that the UE can sustain so this will the path loss at cell edge then right so if I use this equation then I convert this path loss into its uh, constituents it will become like this propagation loss plus other losses which is the body losses building losses vegetation losses plus margins which is the fading margins interference margins is equal to total TX power minus the minimum RX power at which the UE can sustain a service now if I put these on on this side of the equation equation will look like this propagation loss is equal to total TX power minus the minimum RX power minus other losses minus the margins right now this is what we have the propagation losses for now we already know the TX power for our G node B's we also know the minimum receiver sensitivity for the UE as well 
other losses and margins is something that we add ourselves based on um, the network topology for instance urban or suburban or rural so this is also something we know so when we put all of them together we get the propagation loss which is let's say the maximum propagation loss possible for a ue to sustain a particular service now if we get this then the next thing is to understand the propagation models now uh, so 3gpp uh, 38901 there is propagation models defined we have uma model which is for urban we have rma which is for rural so this is the urban model i have simplified it in a, in a simple much simpler equation so that we can understand it so as per that propagation loss is equal to 13.54 which is a constant plus 39.08 log of distance distance here is in meters plus 20 log of frequency the frequency here here is in gigahertz so if we know this then if we want to calculate distance from this equation what will happen distance is equal to propagation loss minus 13.54 which is the constant minus the 20 log of frequency whole of this divided by this 39.08 and then we take an anti-log so distance is equal to this value now we know the propagation loss which is for the cell edge which is this so if we put that over here in this equation and we also know the frequency that we want the, the link budget to be that is uh, let's say 3.5 gigahertz we put that here then what will happen we will get the distance and distance will be the cell edge now i know this is a bit overwhelming so let's do this uh, with an example so let's say i have this over here um, I have a, the same system this is the same equation that we were talking about so now the propagation loss is equal to total TX power minus the minimum RX power minus the other losses minus the margins so let's say I say my total TX power is 40 dBm in this example the interference margin I'm putting as 3 dB the building loss for this one let's say 12 dB the tr uh, vegetation loss is around 7 dB the fading margin let's say I put it as 8 dB and let's say the minimum receiver sensitivity and the minimum RX power that the UE can at which the UE can sustain a service let's say it's minus 110 dBm so if I put all of them in this equation then it becomes 40 from TX power our minimum RX power minus 110 so this will be minus into minus will be an addition minus uh, the other losses which is uh, the 12 from building loss let's say here 7 db for the vegetation loss so 12 plus 7 minus the margins so we have fading margin of 8 db interference margin of 3 db when we do all of this it comes out to be 120 so what we are saying here that at the cell edge with this configuration the maximum propagation loss that the ue can uh, sustain would be 120 db now if we know that we go back to the same equation that we discussed about 3GPP so we use the UMA model from 3GPP 38901 then the distance is equal to anti-log into uh, of propagation loss minus 13.54 minus 20 log of frequency divided by 39.08 it will look like this 120 for the propagation loss minus 13.54 the constant minus 20 log of 3.5 gigahertz which is let's say uh, we're using the frequency 3.5 gigahertz all of this divided by 39.08 and then we take the anti-log and we get is equal to 280 meters so uh, this is the cell edge that we were looking for and if we know this one and then we know the area that we need to cover we just convert uh, based on this we convert this into a hexagon um, area for a cell and then divide it by the total area to get the number of sites and so from this case we can find out easily what our cell edge is so I hope this is clear now if this is clear let's have a look back at the tool and understand uh, what are the different iterations or different functionality now now here we have an option let's say um, we are using the same parameters we are we go back to RRU so our cell edge is 843 right and if I want to uh, increase my building loss let's say I want to increase the building loss to 12 dB let's first do it for 10 dB here you go so for, ten, for, for a 10 dB building loss for 50 kilometer square kilometer area to be covered our cell range is 843 and we need 36 sites now if I increase this to 12 dB 
and I do a calculation for this one I say that we have a 749 meters cell range and number of sites we need now is 45 so it is has increased right similarly if I want to go back to MMU here and I try again we can see that the cell range has increased number of sites has decreased if I want to increase my interference margin let's say it becomes 4 I do a calculation again the cell range has decreased because we have increased the loss so interference margin body loss building loss uh, cable loss fading margin whenever we increase this whenever we increase the loss our cell edge distance will decrease that means we need more number of sites now if I change this to rural so the model will be different that will be a less loss model so I will say I only need nine sites to cover 50 square kilometers if I use a MMU and if I use a RRU to cover the same area it will be around 16 sites are needed so using this uh, methodology we can say that there are different possibilities for different combinations so um, if I want um, a very high throughput as say a user wants 100 uh, Mbps throughput and uh, for the same configuration then what happens we need 77 sites now to cover the same area such that the minimum user throughput will be 100 Mbps if I use the same one for the MMU perspective so I will need around 42 sites to cover the same area to have the throughput of 100 Mbps so this is how uh, different versions or different mechanisms uh, can be used um, another example would be if, if you want to increase the frequency let's say my frequency is 4 gigahertz instead now so what will happen is the cell edge will reduce slightly because the higher the frequency the more the loss so you can see that it has reduced a bit and we need a bit more sites so we need 49 sites now to cover the uh, same area so um, I hope this is all clear now and uh, if it is clear if it, if it helps uh, please subscribe please like and share with your colleagues as well so have a nice day and see you next time bye bye